So I thought I'd make this solar update to uh, help folks that are trying to figure out how much solar am I going to get out of my solar? How much power is it going to make? These are some questions I had when I was trying to figure out our solar installation, our battery installation on Agape. Just to recap, we put five 410 watt sun power solar panels on the back of Agape about a year and a half ago. We put them on a uh, solar arch that we had built on the back of the boat and that part of it's been fabulous. Everything's worked out good. Uh, we went with the Victron system throughout. No this isn't a paid advertisement for Victron. They're not paying me. Just so you know. And uh, it's all the Blue Smart technology that uh, they have which I like and I like using the app it gives me a lot of data so as a system overview we have three MPPT controllers and we have two panels grouped on part port and starboard and one by itself in the center a lot of folks use a separate MPPT for every panel which you know is understandable to help with shading and things like that but the newer panels do a lot better with shading and I think the data here proves out that this system is sufficient with the three controllers. We also have a generator and we have uh, battery to battery chargers off our alternators to protect those from uh, over amping and overheating. And we have a 1000 amp hour lithium bank which is also Victron. And we monitor all this with a BMS, Lynx BMS and a Serbo GX that outputs to a color screen. The data that I'm presenting today is gathered from August through September, a little bit into October of last year, mainly when we were cruising in New York and Maine, and then half of it about is from January to the middle of March in Florida and the Bahamas this year. So it's 106 days of data altogether. And what I found from just looking at the data, the latitude doesn't seem to matter as much as the shade. So our mast provides some shade and also we have clouds. If there weren't for clouds, our solar would be kicking every day. But yeah, there are clouds. And the boat does turn the wrong way sometimes. Uh, if the solar panels were pointed directly towards the sun all the time, those would be awesome days also. But that just doesn't happen every day. As I mentioned, the data comes off the MPPT controllers. What's nice about these is not only do you get to see what's happening right now, but the controllers that uh, Victron has with the Blue Smart technology saves 30 days of data, which you can export into a Excel file, which is what I've done to capture this data. One of the mistakes I made when trying to figure out how to convert the watts of solar that I might get to amp hours in a battery bank was I was using 12 volts to convert the watts to amps. The systems do not run at 12 volts. Our system is running at 13 to 13.2 volts 100% of the time pretty much and when it's charging it's much higher because you have to apply more voltage to get the flow through the wiring and into the batteries. I think 13.5 is a pretty good conversion number to use, 13.5 volts. Um, you know, our solar, when it's really pushing into the batteries and they're getting uh, fuller, you know, we see voltages up around 13.8 to 14, and obviously 14.2 when they're full. But most of the time, I think 13 and a half is probably a pretty good conversion number to use when you're converting the watts to amps. So this is 106 days of data, like I said, and uh, you can see that 
the systems are fairly well balanced. We're getting about double the production out of the paired panels on port and starboard as we are getting from the center panel. And, you know, shading looks fairly consistent. Um, it is interesting that we're spending most of our time in bulk, which part of that is lithium. If we had a lead acid bank, it would be quite a bit different. We would be spending more time in absorption. But it also shows that our battery bank is fairly well sized, 1,000 amp hours versus 2,000 watts of solar. If we were kicking the batteries into absorption after just a couple hours every day, that would be telling me my battery bank is too small or I have too much solar. I can't ever have too much solar, so it must be too small a battery bank. With this setup here, we're not kicking the batteries into 100% or hitting the full charge every day, which is, I think, better on lithium batteries. Most lithium batteries you see now have software that prevents them from sitting at 100% all the time because that's bad on lithium batteries, just like drawing lead acid down too far is bad. So lead acid batteries is less of a worry. They like to marinate in energy all day long uh, lithium not so much. But you can also see from the data that we spend a little bit of time in absorption and uh, float and to be honest with you those are usually on days where we've had to run our generator to make water. We did put about 210 hours on our generator last year and most of that was making water but a benefit is we also usually top the batteries off when we do that. We have gone 10 days without running the generator and our solar and battery combination carried us through. If we didn't have to uh, use the generator to make water, I think we could probably be off the grid for quite a while. One of the things that I wanted to pull out of this was, you know, how much power am I getting versus the rated power of the panels? Because that's really all we have as a guide is the rated panel. So I did uh, a chart here that shows what we get on an average basis and then our best days. And on our best days, we get about 50% of the rated power out of our panels. Um, on our average days, it's about 25%. So I think, you know, like I said, if you have a power boat, and you don't have as much shading issues, you're probably going to get closer to the 50%. If you're in an area where there's a lot of clouds, a lot of overcast, and you have more shading issues, you're going to get lower performance. But I think 25% is probably a good number to use as a average. Um, that's what we're getting. And uh, this has stayed pretty consistent. You can also see it's consistent across uh, all the panels. So that would indicate that it's probably a pretty steady number. I'm going to continue to keep track of this data and we'll see if the numbers move over time. One of the things obviously you have to do is you have to figure out your usage. This is harder than you would think because all of our devices turn on and off. You can see that our big users or is our hot water heater, which pulls 750 watts when it's on. Our main refrigerator, which is about 66. The freezer, 75. Second refrigerator, 27. And we have a 120 volt ice maker that pulls 150 watts when it's running. The question is, is how often do these things run? It's hard to know. But from observing our system, we're using about 100 to 120 amp hours uh, at night and so that's probably a pretty good base because we're not really doing anything at night you know we're not opening and closing fridge or freezer or ice and we're not uh, except for running some fans we're not really using a lot of electricity so if you just extrapolate off that I would I would estimate that we probably use um, somewhere around 30 amp hours on a on a 24-hour basis maybe a little more on some days less on others and you know that that converts out to uh, right around 4,000 watts um, like I said some days it's less than that some days it's more and we're making <clears throat> you know 
100% of our power, theoretically. But, you know, like I said, we have to run the generator to make water. And, you know, there's days that these clouds kind of string together and uh, you get lower performance. But I feel like our system is pretty well sized for our boat. I mean, could we have some more solar panels? Sure. You know, if I put in a 12 volt water maker, that might be something I'd want to do or have a bigger battery bank possibly. But right now the system is working pretty well. And in conclusion, the system's fairly well balanced. The three MPPTs versus five is working well. Um, you know, like I said, if you've got a boat with no shading issues, no mass, the power boat, you're going to get better performance than what we're getting. Uh, a sailboat with multiple masts, like a catch or something like that, might get less performance. Just depends on where you can site your solar panels and uh, how much cloudy weather you get. Hopefully this data has helped you. I know when I was looking to size our solar system, there was a lot of information out there where people had rules of thumb about taking rated max and dividing by four and other things, but nobody really had any data. And so uh, here's some data. Um, obviously yours will differ, but it gives you a start point, a, a baseline. And I think 25% of rated power is probably about where most people are going to come out. 25 to 40% on an average basis. Hope you enjoyed this uh, YouTube video. Hit like and subscribe if you did. We plan to do more of these kind of articles or videos uh, as we go cruising around the Bahamas and the East Coast. Take care. See you next time.